Gentlemen, Happy New Year. Good to see you both. Happy New Year, man. You know, it's interesting because, you know, the sci-fi thriller horror, this is like a genre-bending movie, and I loved it. And even I want to start with you. I'm just curious how it reads on the script. Because for me, to be honest with you, it was more scary and horror movie-wise than everything. Because the AI and the obsessives, I'm just curious about that for you. Yeah, I know what you mean. I read it and I and I loved it. There was it was a duality for me, right? Like when I was reading it, it felt I didn't want to stop reading it, which you know is is a good sign. But I think also what Spencer and Sarah did was uh, have the AI element, which is uh, the fear stuff, and then also at the yes. same time it putters along like a great '90s throwback thriller. And I think the combination of those two things, I think I really dug that. Like and Mark, the, the, your, your character is one of those that really kind of red flags it early on and everything. And I feel like your character really kind of realizes the real kind of horror aspect of it, of the obsessive component. Because I feel like there are moments where it's like, yeah, AI, and it's like, oh, yes, the fear of AI, you know what I mean? But like the obsessive component. So did it read similar like that as well, like the the, the horror movie component of it too? Uh, yeah. So, see, when I first read it, I just thought it was really exciting and engaging, yeah. and it passed the coffee test. If I can read a script with just <laughs> one coffee, it's a good script. <laughs> but it worked. Um, yeah, I think the thriller part, I mean, looking back at it, is really this idea of something watching you constantly. Like, I've got a, a Google here in the corner, and it's fine now, it's just a white little dot, but if suddenly Eamon was perched on the side and you just had a human just staring out like Tim, yeah. you know, <laughs> all the time, you'd be like, oh my God, why is there people in my room just listening to me all the time? It'd be weird. <laughs> But I don't know if you both had like a MacBook or anything, but remember though, even those days were like the little button on the top of the cameras on even. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like the worst version of that though. <laughs> like the guy going through your underwear drawer when you walk into your room, you know, you're like, bro. <laughs> is it is it cool though, even working on a thriller, sci-fi, horror movie, like at a time where there really is an appetite for a lot of that content? Like, I'm just curious about that. Totally. I yeah. think always that that sort of genre of like thriller, horror, like the stakes are always, the stakes are the funnest thing to play, you know, sometimes in acting. And these these sort of indie films that, you know, a lot are uh, the bread and butter of a lot of actors. Like they're, they're fun to play because the stakes are high. It's like doing theater a little bit. Like you've got to play it, you've got to sell it. And, and and that's what it offers you. So yeah, the stakes are always high and it's super fun to play. And Mark, I'm just curious as well, because I always feel like from script to screen is always the coolest thing to look at journey-wise from an actor storyteller perspective. Because in a lot of ways, they are two separate journeys because a lot of things could be different when you actually go film the thing. But I'm just curious, is it two kind of separate journeys for you as an actor? Or is it all one kind of big journey, kind of reading the script and then going and filming it? Um, I think it's, for me, it's one big journey to a certain degree. It's yeah. like one big thing. Because you have your vision, right, at the yeah. start. Your ideas that you want to bring to the script. And then when you get a creative team together, it gets really exciting. Because then you can bounce ideas off, uh, off of each other. So I think you've always got to go with your instinct and your gut, you yep. know? And that happens straight away when you start reading it. Yeah, absolutely. Both of you have worked on projects in the past where you have to kind of go back in time and everything. Even with The Witcher, Mark with Last Kingdom and everything. And I know it's all storytelling and everything, but I'm wondering, and I want to start with you, Eamon, if there is a little bit of kind of a mindset change working on something like The Witcher, then going to Tim, or do you take things from The Witcher, even though it's different kind of characters and settings, to a movie like Tim? I'm just curious about that. And then, Mark, I want to hear your perspective on The Last Kingdom as well. I think that's interesting. I think uh, it's I think for, it's always a matter of scale, you know, like on something like The Witcher or, or or something like that. You walk onto these sets that are huge and it's it's a world and it's a vibe. And then sometimes on like Tim, you walk into the kitchen and I have to sometimes have the same amount of threat or intensity or joy or whatever. But it's just a matter of like space and scale. Yeah. So, I mean, truth is truth. And uh, feel it, you know, like uh, getting a getting a stake across 
is the same thing. It's just a matter of scale and size. It's and, storytelling at the end of the day as well, but the yeah. scale, absolutely. Mark, do you kind of agree a little bit with that, with Last Kingdom? Yeah, yeah, I think so. With this project, it's definitely more intense because we're all fighting against the clock, you know? Yeah. Especially yeah. Like indie, indie movies. So it's this quickly getting to know everyone, banding together, um, and then going on this creative journey together. Um, so it's just a lot more charged, a lot more intense, which is fantastic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because everyone's a little more stressed, everything's heightened, uh, and you're there for one another, another to support your your artists, your yeah. your friends. Um, but I'll tell you one thing, and maybe we we have this in common, man. It's so nice doing uh, so nice doing TV shows and movies where you wear normal clothes. Oh, 100%. On. I can't even imagine the fittings yeah. both of you had to do and all that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Lucinda Wright on The Witcher is an incredible artist, but she puts me in some fucking armor, you know? And like, it's, really, it's nice to wear one costume. <laughs> and it'd be comfortable. You yeah. Know? Then you can yeah. sit down in the jail. <laughs> did you both chat about that a little bit? About the kind of, hey, we both were on like medieval show. Like, did you ever chat about that while you were on Tim or not really? I don't think so. I think we, I, I, it was a joy to sort of like what we were, I think for me, what we was really lucky is, and especially like a chamber piece like this, Georgina and Mark were, are incredible actors and also great people. And so we became really kind of tight really quickly. And we just sort of chatted about everything, but, and then, and gave each other a lot of stick, which is always fun. <laughs> What's really weird. We bumped into each other on the street. That's right. Just like I got the roll. I went for a walk and then this guy accosted me on the street. You, I think you thought I was going to ask for your autograph. Ah, uh, yeah. I, I, I was going to. And then you said, I did. I asked. It's an uh, photo only. And you were like, no, dude. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's really funny to just see that everyone like you're all working together but you all kind of know each other like you said about like them being amazing actors and i agree and Amy, you're a fantastic actor as well but it's cool when it's like those worlds collide a little bit right where you're like a fan of their craft and you get to work with them as well totally i i've seen mark and georgina's work before and i think and it's really nice when and, and you get excited about that to work opposite that sort of person but then when they're a great person and we all i think the three of us i think it's fair to say not work differently, but dif have different a different kind of process. But I think we were lucky that those three things fused together pretty well. I mean, I think we had a great time together, and that always makes it so great. One hundred percent. The 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 like around the clock situation and kind of let's go like the indie film thing. I feel like is so interesting. But I'm just wondering, Mark, because that's my next question. How conscious are you of the audience watching Tim when you're making it? Or does that kind of happen afterwards? I feel like in some degree, sometimes with certain script, scripts and everything, it naturally happens after they, they yell cut. You're like, wow, like people are going to really be gravitated to this scene. Like, does that happen a little bit or not really? Not really. I feel like <laughs> I'm so excited to ask that. Yeah. Not at all. No. <laughs> I feel as if it robs you of, hey, because I would say that's our time, right? As yeah. creatives, it's our time on set to do our thing. And yes, we have everyone in mind who's, who's going to watch it. But if you're constantly thinking of the end result, it means you can't be in the moment, right? You can't yeah. really enjoy that day. Um, so I try not to think about that as much. I mean, technically, every, everyone's the, the same. When you turn up and you have to about, think about certain shots of what you're going to do that day, but you normally just concentrate on your job. I think if you concentrate on the end result too much, which is out with your control, mm -hmm. um, then maybe maybe there's a massive pitfall there. Depend, <laughs> I feel like it depends on the pro. But does it depend on the project too, Eamon, too? Like I feel like it might depend on the project, right? A hundred percent, because I think Mark said before, like this indie films especially are you know famous and it's part of their charm i think and their and their immediacy is that it's a tough shoot like the schedule is brutal and everyone and not just the actors like we all talk about the actors but like this crew worked their asses off uh and we were shooting in a heat wave in summer in a glass house you know and and th this crew was really turned up every day because of the script and because of spencer everyone wanted to be there and i guess we don't have time to think about 
reactions or anything. We've just got to tell the story. And I think there's there's an energy and, a, and an immediacy to that that really kind of helps. Absolutely. And as said, if you're thinking about like whether the audience is going to dig that thing, like a hundred percent of the time, they're not going to dig that thing. Yeah, it's fun because I'm also creative as well, you know, like uh, produced and directed, um, produced and wrote shorts and everything. And I, I get it as well. Like you're really like, like, like you're, you're, you're in there. You can't really think about those things, but there were some moments where you're like, you rap, like immediately after you rap, where you're like, I want to know what people, like people are going to be, like, it's going to be cool. Like, people are going to, like, gravitate toward this scene. Like, I feel like it happens sometimes. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you have enough time to think about it, for sure. Yeah. Um. Last question before we wrap up. I can't wait for people to get the seat. They're going to be able to see it, Uh, Tim, you know, on demand in a theater January 12th very quickly. Takeaway-wise, we kind of talked about it's got everything. It's got the sci-fi, the thriller, the horror movie component. Mark, when they get a chance to watch this film, what do you hope they get out of it, takeaway-wise? Um, I really hope people just think about technology and where it potentially could go so mm -hmm. just to be aware of it you know yeah absolutely that, that, i'm telling you even now i think about the macbook camera light the whole time <laughs> <laughs> totally me too <laughs> Which I thought about earlier. it's exactly that yeah any anything else takeaway wise even for a wrap up i think th what i liked about watching this movie and mark and i've talked about it like i think it's just it's a lot of fun to yeah. watch this movie and I think that's a great thing. I mean, yes, totally the AI element is really interesting and a cautionary tale, but also it's just fun to watch like a throwback thriller, you know? And I think that Spencer and Sarah have done a good job of that. But there's this ping pong match of the AI and the obsessive component of things. I don't know if you mean by, you know what I mean? Like, yes, he's a robot, but like obsessing is obsessing you know what i mean yeah. and we can all relate to a little like i think there's a little bit of tim in all of us like there is a moment uh, there's something in your life that you sort of get fixated on and like I think hyper focused on yeah absolutely yeah, and no for sure in theaters on demand january 12th that is tim mark eman and it was an honor and privilege to speak with you both happy new year thank you so much for your time you too man thank you thank you for tuning in to pop turnative Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.